Speaking of evidence, uh, another piece to this case, unnecessary, didn't have to happen, but it did happen. And I'm curious to get your thoughts on this and if it actually will affect this case as it maybe goes to trial and lets things bleed out. What, what, I'm curious how this could affect the case, if, if anything. A photo uh, posted on the Osceola, uh, Osceola County Sheriff's Marcos Lopo, uh, Marcus Lopez's personal Instagram page within 24 hours of the uh, teenager's body being found was a picture of the teenager's uh accidentally posted now I, i'm i'm fairly certain i'm sure he probably didn't want that to happen but how common is this how easy is this to happen is this just kind of the world we live in today where we have such easy access to get information out there this would imply that he had evidence photos on his phone his personal device uh and then accidentally you know when you're on instagram you click to highlight what you're going to post Maybe his thumb was a little fidgety that day and he clicked an extra one. It was just supposed to be a photo of an event. Uh, and it turned out he put the event photo up in a caption about the event and then also a picture of Maddie's body on Ugh. Instagram. Outrage there. Uh, at the yeah. same point, uh, two incidents of what are you posting uh, after another Osceola County Sheriff's Office uh, official posted a selfie but the suspect, Stephen Stearns, uh, is standing in the background as he was, I believe, walking into uh, a cell. Uh, what the hell's going on with <laughs> the sheriff's department that that these sort of mistakes can happen? Both have been apologized for. Both have been taken down saying it was an accident. But gosh, I mean, posting something like that, what, what does that mean for this case? I mean, it's ultimately, it's not going to mean anything for yeah. the case, but in terms of you know just decency yeah you, you know it's a problem and you know that's that's the the ugly underbelly of social media man you know it, it's like you know like the the cop taking the selfie mm -hmm. you know probably crowing about how they you know got a suspect or what, whatever he was doing it's just you know like keep your business out of your personal life you know on your on your personal accounts and and especially when you're talking about the sheriff's account on Instagram, yeah, and, and, and that going out is inexcusable, really. Well, I, I, I mean, guess, I, like, imagine yeah. Tony if we had a like a mother that <laughs> was like a typical victim's mother, you know, and th and that goes out, like, how mortified the, yeah. the family would be, like, in, in just in general, you know. I mean, it just can't, it can't happen, you know. And, and like, I, I mean, what do we have to do? Do we have to start making rules? Probably. You know, it, employers have to make rules about social media accounts, and you know, I mean, there there should always be some oversight, maybe when you're dealing when you're dealing with like law enforcement agencies in terms of who's handling the socials, yeah, and making sure that that mistakes like this don't happen. You know, I mean, I, I have to assume it was an honest mistake, but what a what a brutally horrific mistake we're, to make. We're talking know? about evidence photos here of a murder of a thirteen year old. Number one, why is that on his phone? Uh, I, I right. mean, is, aren't there more? Aren't there protocols to this, or is this something one of those magical things we all assume exists that these sort of things would be held in some other device or some other storage capacity that's not just you know next to photos of his dog on his phone where it could easily be accessed? But are, are there no protocols for this sort of thing where this sort of accident just just couldn't happen because they're they're stored somewhere safe and secure? I mean, if there if there's not, there should be, and yeah, that's uh, exceptionally unusual. Uh, typically, you know, discovery is kept in a very secure location by law enforcement, by the prosecutor's office once it gets turned over to them, and you know, typically by the defense as well. You know, I mean, th those are the three agencies that um, will typically get their hands on evidence in terms of preparing the case. And yeah, I, I can't think of a situation why he would have taken a photograph of a photograph. And you know what I mean? Like, or unless he was, I mean, is, he, is he supposed to be there at the scene using his phone to take photos? No. Yeah. I no. mean, I mean, this isn't yeah. like, you know, that's like a, a major County, you know yeah. what I mean? They have, they have crime scene texts that are, or evidence texts that are out there taking those photographs, you know, all those have to get turned over 
to the defense. Yeah, you know, I ultimately mean, to the state and the defense, both. Because here you have it where, okay, he accidentally clicked on an extra picture on Instagram and it went up. My thought is, okay, you know, if this is your device, this is your personal account, and you're out living your life, I think most of us at one point or another have lost a phone in the course of the last 20 years or so. Yeah. Someone gets a hold of that and it's evidence photos of this case and God knows what else. The implications of that, I mean, that is so sloppy and so dangerous, is it not? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I've, I've never heard of anything like that. Yeah. Like I've, I've never heard of a situation where like a law enforcement officers are using their personal devices to take photographs of crime scenes. That's what I'm saying. To me, the more likely scenario is that he, for whatever reason, took a, a you know, took a pick of another pick of one of the crime scene picks and decided to have it on his phone. Like yeah. I, I, I can't think of a, a, a reasonable explanation as to why that would have been done. Like I, I can almost guarantee that it wasn't him at the crime scene taking shots. I mean, is that to say that that an officer couldn't use their personal phone to take some some photographs? Like if they're the first, if they're responding officer, the first to the scene and they're worried about preserving something, mm -hmm. like say for instance, there's weather, yeah. you know, and they're the first one to the scene and there's like a footprint and they're like, Oh my God, I'm like worried, you know, like in the 10 minutes that it may take you know, my support to get here. I, like, I'm going to take some photographs just to preserve evidence sure. because I'm, I'm worried it might get spoiled. You know, those are extenuating circumstances, but in terms of like having photographs of the victim, you know, like, and, and I haven't seen it. I didn't see it. So I don't know yeah. what it was. It's odd. It's odd. It, yeah. It's, it's strange to me, you know, and, and why he would keep it on there, you know, is, yeah. is the next question. It's like, Oh, so if there was some kind of circumstance in which he needed to use his personal device to take the photographs and why is he keeping them on his own personal device after the fact, you know, like that seems like they should be deleted off his device. You know, I mean, frankly, it's a crime. Like if you and I got caught with that picture, it's child pornography, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, 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 assuming that if, if she's clothed yeah. or if she's not clothed, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a criminal act to have yeah. even be in possession of that kind of photograph. So I don't know. It's a, it's a weird circumstance. It really is. Yeah. I very, at the very least something that the protocol needs to be looked at if this is how they're operating for real. Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. If you like the podcast, be sure to like subscribe and press that bell. So you don't miss any of our updates on the cases we're following for you right here at the hidden killers podcast and true crime today. And thanks.